Okay, I have read the book nine times. Now tens fall for me and I get bored. What is wrong with me? I wouldn't say there's anything wrong with you. If you got tens falling all over you, they may be ten physically, meaning they're hot enough to have sex with, but obviously he's bored. He's not... He's not verbally and mentally stimulated by the conversation. And unfortunately, those things are, are going to happen. Yeah. And it, it's the idea is you, it, is you keep dating until you find somebody that you really click with on all levels, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and physically. And so what's happening is if she's a 10, that means she's a 10 physically. Well, there's lots right. of girls that are 10s. But as soon as they open their mouth, you realize they're kind of dumber in a bag of hammers. Mm -hmm. And some women are boring to talk to. Some women don't really have much going on in, in their lives. And you're going to have to spend your time with somebody you genuinely enjoy listening to. You like how her mind works. Yeah. You're interested in what's going on in her life. Maybe, you know, she's got things going on in her life that are humorous and kind of funny. And she thinks it's funny as well. And you make light of it and you have a good time together. Right. Because the sex is going to be a real small part of your relationship most of your time is just going to be spent existing together mm -hmm. and so you should be with somebody that you like hanging out together you like sleeping together with in the same bedroom you like going to dinner lunch breakfast with them you like traveling with them right you like listening to her you like netflix and chilling on the couch and just being with one another because a, a big part really the majority of being in a relationship with somebody really is about existing together because mm -hmm. it's not all sunshine and roses. You're not doing super exciting things and super exciting dates every single day of the week. Sometimes you're, you're working and you got other stuff going on and it's just nice to come home to somebody in the evening who brings peace into your life, who's happy to see you. You're happy to see her mm -hmm. and you can kind of lose yourself in each other's presence and being with one another. Yeah. She's excited to hear what you got to say. You're excited what she's got to say. In this particular case, it's great that he's attracting women that are physical tens, but he hasn't found somebody that he really clicks with emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. And so in that case, it's nothing to say, oh, what's wrong with me? Because if you say, what's wrong with me, that's a statement to your brain. And your brain goes, okay, well, let me figure out what's wrong with you, Corey. Mm -hmm. And then it starts looking for reasons to say, hey, this is why you're fucked up, dude. This is why you're... This is why you're messed up. This is why you yeah. attract tens, but you're bored. Mm -hmm. Instead of being proud of yourself and saying, wow, I got these super hot women that are really into me and I have a lot more choices than I used to have. But the thing you got to remember is how often do you meet a new best friend? Mm -hmm. When do you, when, when anybody watching this is like, when was the last time you met somebody that you really clicked with and you felt like you were supposed to meet? Again, when's the last time you met somebody that became your best friend or one of your closest friends? Mm -hmm. That's a special moment. It almost never happens. Yeah. And so it's the same thing when it comes to women. There are a lot of beautiful women all over the world. No matter where you are, there's beautiful women everywhere. Yeah. But somebody who shares the similar goals, similar values, who's not only hot but fun to be around, who's got a good attitude, who was raised right, who's calm who brings peace into your life instead of drama and chaos, mm -hmm. those are far and few between. And so this is the process that you have to go through because you're trying to eliminate all the possibilities. Yeah, she was hot. She was a 10, but she was boring as fuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was hot. She was a 10, but you know she can't hold down a stable job. She can't pay her, pay her bills on time. Her power gets turned off. Her Something's always breaking down with her car. She forgets to make her car payment or whatever. Yeah. Or every time you talk to her, she's mad, she's pissed off, she's got, you know, some drama going on in her family or whatever. It's, you know, you have to be able to move on when you recognize it that it's be grateful that you met her, but just know that she's not doing it for you in every way. You don't want to settle. Right. So you got to keep searching. You got to keep looking. Because mm -hmm. your outcome is to find somebody that you click with emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and physically, not just physically. Because, mm -hmm. again, as you get older... Especially as you get really old and everything, you know, your balls are sagging on the ground and her tits are bouncing off her knees when she walks. It's, you know, you're not going to, you know, when you're 100 years old, you're not going to be super attracted to one another physically. Mm -hmm. But if you made a good selection and she's easygoing, easy to get along with, and you really genuinely enjoy being around one another, yeah, it'll be a beautiful relationship. It will completely 
enrich your life. And so you're looking for a completely well-rounded person that fits into your life. And so he just hasn't found, found one yet. And that's okay. That's part of the process. Again, mm-hmm. think in terms of how often you meet a new best friend. It's like almost never happens. Yeah. And maybe look at where you're meeting these girls. Like, where are these tens coming from? Like, is it a specific area? Maybe he's on a dating app and he's just, yeah, you know, he's that. meeting a lot of girls that way, but he's just not really digging them. Right. The good news is you have a good problem. You have lots of women that want to date and sleep with you that are really hot. And, you know, most men in this world would love to have that problem. It's yeah. just your challenge is to not settle. And, and to stay single until you find somebody that lights you up on the inside and vice versa, who you light up on the inside as well. Right. And don't get cocky either because then that's what he's attracting as well. If you're going to act cocky towards other people, then that's what you're going to get. Cocky stuck. and charming and funny. Yeah. There you go. Hum- be humble. There's nothing wrong with being cocky, but you don't want to be arrogant. Yeah. Because, you know, women say, like, don't be cocky. What they're really saying is don't be an arrogant dick. Don't come at me and have the attitude that you're somehow better than me. Right. Or that you're going to belittle me like a lot of what you see in the the red pill community, especially in the different podcasts where they bring the OnlyFans girls in or the sex workers or the strippers. And everybody in the show is basically a girl that comes from a broke – they're hot but they're coming from a broken home Mm -hmm. and then they're, you know, that makes for entertaining content like Jerry Springer type of content. But well, you know, a lot of these guys their contention is, Oh, this is modern women. This is the dating pool out there. Yeah. And most normal family oriented guys are not trying to date a stripper. They're not trying to date an OnlyFans girl. They're not trying to date a sex worker. Yeah. And so it's disingenuous, but it is great for clicks and selling things and getting people to watch your videos when you have drama and chaos and stuff like that. But it's not representative of, you know, women. Because women that come from good families, that have a good social network, they're not on the dating apps. Mm -hmm. They meet plenty of dudes that want to date them just living their lives, whether it's through work or their social circle or their friends. So on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being you love him, you adore him, he's the best, most incredible man ever, where would you put your attraction to to him on a scale of one to ten mm, like a seven a seven <laughs> it sounds bad but i don't know so this is really good i appreciate you being honest and sharing that but mm. so the guys that know from my book know that there's an attraction table in there and so on a scale of one to ten love you know deep goo goo gaga puppy dog love starts at ten and so Caroline is about a seven. And so seven, eight is where eh, we can, okay, I want to all just only want to see you and date you and see how I feel. Mm-hmm. The bottom line is you're not over heels in love with him. You're not ready to have his babies or get married. No. But you're open to your attraction, your interest, potentially growing right, with yeah. time. Mm-hmm. With time. And so far, is it growing? Little. Or are you? It's kind of like it's still. It's or still, you, it's still the same. It's, it's kind still, of flatlined. Yeah, because yeah. it just happened like last week. So. So compared to how you felt him about thirty days ago, are you more into him than you were thirty days ago, or is it still the same? Um, more into him for sure. I would have some moments where I realized, like, oh, I really do like him. Like, because there was a time because we were talking about this where he was, we, he would go to kiss you and you would give him the cheek. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely better than back then. So does he still get the cheek occasionally? No. No more cheeks. Always mm-hmm. lips. Yeah. So he's he's moving in the right direction. Yeah. But she, we'll see. <laughs> we'll what see. does it mean when a woman says, we'll see? When a woman says, maybe, or we'll see, it typically means no. So long term, do you think this is the man? This is the one? Do you think... Um, He's going to be the, the forever guy or forever this week or forever this month. I don't or is he the flavor of the month? Definitely not the flavor of the month. I do see potential like six months down the line. Do you think maybe if things keep going the way they're going in six months, you might feel differently? Yeah. If it progressed. Prog- progressed? progressed? Yeah, progressed. Because I guess I'm just over the whole... Um, I just want to get in, be engaged already. I'm like ready for that step in life of moving in together and stuff like that. So 
Because he did mention that, right? That he wanted to move in? Yeah, he did. Yeah. I'm not ready for that just yet. Give it like two months. What if, so what if he proposed tomorrow? Would you be like, oh, yes, let's do it? Or would you be like, eh, I'm kind of not there yet, buddy? I don't know. These are tough questions. I don't know. So when somebody says, I don't know, what it really means is I know, but I don't want to say. Maybe. So the fact she hesitated, she's not there yet. Mm. She's not ready to get engaged. No, not, not ready, no. But she's open to it. In other words, your goals, your values is ultimately you want to get married and be a wife. Yeah, that's the goal. And he's a potential, mm-hmm. but uh, he's sitting at a seven. Seven. For about the last 30 days, he's been kind of stuck at seven. Right, yeah. Not really going up or down, just kind of... He's there, yeah. He's there. He's not improving, nor He's not knocking he... your socks off. He's just there. Right, yeah. But I definitely don't want it to be a long thing where, like, we're dating for a year, two years, three years, and there's still nothing. Like, I'm tired of the high school dating. So if, if like, one year from now, you're we have this conversation and it's still a seven... As I far hope as your not. attraction. I but if it not. is, what are you going to do then? I probably would end the relationship. I think I'm at that age where I don't want to waste any more time. I so wanna. how much more time will you need before you know whether or not it's a waste? Six. Or if you're going to get to the next level with him? Six months. Six more months? So you're yeah. going to give it six months? Yeah. That would be when, like... Unless he starts doing a lot of unattractive things that just make you go, oh, Right. He's just yeah. like all the others. God damn it. Yeah, no. I have such high hopes. I give it by, like... Summertime? Summertime? Yeah. Before the April, holidays May. holidays start, I would cut Memorial it. Memorial Day? Yeah. May? Yeah. So he's got, so we're now, what, almost middle of March? Come, we're, we're, Are we? No. No, oh, we're early March. We just started, yeah, March. So we just started March. So the hottest month in, is January. That's like middle of the summer, like middle of July. What did I say, January? You said January. I'm like, isn't that New Year's? No, it's middle of July. So the middle of July is like the hottest month. So that's kind of like mm-hmm. the middle of the summer. So July is the seventh month. We're in the third month. Yeah. So by beginning of the summer, is that what you said? Towards the end of Because this is fun because we'll have all this video record of all <laughs> these things. Yeah, like towards the end of summer. So, so that once. Oh, August, now it's the end of summer. You're going to yeah, get home. Yeah, yeah. You but know, summer is always fun and that summertime fling kind of thing. But definitely don't want to enter the relationship into um, the holidays if there's nothing progressing. But you're hopeful that your interest is going to go up, that he's yeah. going to do and say enough things that's going to make you more attractive. Yeah. 